It is well known by now that Russian tanks suffer from two major drawbacks. First is their carousel autoloader, which when struck often leads to catastrophic detonations or cook-offs. And the second major drawback is their poor reverse speed, both of which are still a problem for their latest T-90M tank in active service. But these issues are not unique for the Russian tanks. A massive majority of the Ukrainian-made tanks also suffer from the same issue, mainly the T-64 tank variants. But there was a tank that fixed both of these issues, for the most part, developed in Ukraine in the late 1990s. The tank in question is the T-8420 Yatagan, also called Karen 220. The main feature of the tank was a new 120mm NATO-style gun, which could load and fire NATO standard ammunition. This was required because the tank was made for the Turkish trials, where Turkey wanted to test several different tanks and opt to buy some for future use, depending on the results of the trials. The trials took place in the year 2000, and there were four different tanks that took part in the trials. American M1A2 Abrams, German Leopard 2A6, French Leclerc, and the Ukrainian Yatagan. The tank got the name because of the famous Ottoman sword Yatagan, since it was intended for the Turkish market. It wasn't the first tank to feature the 120mm gun. In 1999, a T-72 120 was presented at an IDEX 99 exhibition. The features from this tank were then borrowed and used on the T-84 platform, which was far superior. Later that same year, the construction of the Yatagan was completed. The main gun was a unique 120mm KBM-2, a Ukrainian design, so it wasn't an already existing gun from NATO tanks retrofitted into the tank. It was a completely new design. Because of the tight deadlines, Ukraine actually contracted Swiss Ordnance Enterprise Corporation for the production of the barrels for their gun. The gun met all NATO standards and could fire NATO standard ammunition, including APFSDS, HEAT, MPAT and other. On top of that, it could fire a Ukrainian-designed ATGM if required by the customer. Another novel feature of Yatagan was the bustle autoloader, isolated from the crew compartment. The design was similar to that of the Leclerc tank, but not the same. The protection of the autoloader was stated to be on the level of the Abrams and Leopard 2 tanks. The rate of fire was stated to be 8 to 10 rounds per minute, which would be faster than the Soviet-era autoloaders still being used on both Russian and Ukrainian tanks. The ammo capacity of the tank is said to be 40 shells, 22 of which would actually be in the autoloader. The problem is that the rest of the ammunition is not protected in any special way and is located in the hull of the vehicle, and thus, if the extra ammo is loaded, it would again lead to a cook-off or a detonation. Good thing is that the ammo capacity of the autoloader is the same as on a T-72 tank, and we have heard numerous times how crews on both sides just load the ammunition in the carousel autoloader, so if this tank was ever accepted for active service anywhere, the crews would have a choice of not loading the extra ammunition into the vehicle, thus drastically increasing the survivability. Now, there are several reasons why the T-84 was a much better choice for the upgrade than the original T-72. T-84 has superior protection. Both tanks would have been equipped with NOJ or NIJ explosive reactive armor, but the base armor of the T-84 is superior. On top of that, the fire control system was better as well, and no changes would have been necessary to the already existing system other than changing some settings for ballistics and similar features because of the new gun, which is what was actually done. And the most important upside of the T-84 platform is the much superior reverse speed. As I have discussed multiple times on my channel, the T-84 tanks have a reverser, which allows the driver to change the gears from forward to reverse, and in theory have the same gearing in reverse as he would in normal mode. I say in theory because the reverse speed has actually been limited to 35 km per hour, 4 gears instead of 7. This was done in order for the driver not to, in panic or whatever, go full speed in reverse and get the tank stuck or do some other kind of damage, since this kind of speed is more than enough for combat conditions and is pretty much on par with NATO tanks. And being powered by the 1200 horsepower 60D2 engine, the tank was pretty mobile overall. After the trials it was said that all four tanks had pretty comparable performance, but according to some sources, the unofficial results put Leopard 2A6 in the first place and Yatagan in second. Yatagan was pretty favorable because of its 10 ton lower weight than its competitors and its cheap price, since it was the cheapest out of the four tanks that took part in the trials. Unfortunately, none of the tanks would ultimately be chosen, because the Turkish government decided to reduce the budget for the new tank program and the decision to modernize the old M60 tanks was made instead. 
The contract was awarded to the Israelis and it was also decided to buy an old stock of German Leopard 2A4 tanks, and therefore the fate of the Yatagan was sealed. The tank was actually not scrapped, and it took part in several parades in Ukraine until the start of the war in 2022. After the war it was spotted at an unknown location in a garage together with a BM Oplotech, but we have not received any updates about it ever since. This tank, in my opinion, would have actually been quite a decent tank for Ukraine themselves. The problem is that no one even imagined this war would be taking place 20 years after this tank was made. Having a tank with a protected bustle autoloader, which actually fires NATO ammunition, would have both reduced the losses and made it possible for NATO to supply them with the ammunition for these tanks. But unfortunately, nothing came of this tank. Another problem is that Ukraine probably wouldn't have been able to make any substantial number of these tanks, based on their low production numbers of T-84 and BM Oplo tanks, but having this tank in active service would have been pretty cool in my opinion. That would be all for now, if you like my content you can support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day. Thank you.